Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Semi. Today is a stash with Stephanie Day where we work on a brand new fat quarter friendly pattern that I've designed to be inspired by this month's subscription fabric that's sent out. If you're not a member yet, uh, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about it and then we'll get into the tutorial. Uh, basically you get 12 fat quarters for $29.99 plus shipping and then you get some exclusive coupons that you can use to get uh, additional fabric so you can make enough for a whole quilt. Um, sometimes you can get it done with three yards but most of the time you need a little bit more fabric in order to make that work and so you get exclusive discounts on that you get over $200 worth of free patterns uh, that from previous Stash with Stephanie patterns and you also get a discount on my new book Fat Quarter Workshop which includes some of the favorite all-time patterns that you can now only get in the book Fat Quarter Workshop uh, plus two exclusive patterns that are Fat Quarter friendly that we will be doing videos on in the next couple of weeks um, so love Let's take a peek at this month's fabric and I really think you're gonna like this design it's very graphic it's very modern uh, it works really well and it's been inspired by uh, this month's fabric collection and also it's it's pretty quick and easy the last couple months we've challenged you we've done some no waist flying geese we've done some 60 degree triangles. so now we're gonna take it a step back and do something a little bit more simple something that you can definitely get together pretty quickly and really I think even though this works really well with a graphic fabric that we are using today it could go with a lot of different quilts so I think you guys are going to enjoy it even if you are not a member of the club um, this fabric is already shipped to our club members but we do have kits while supplies last over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com you can also join the club there as well it's a lot of fun people have really enjoyed it it's really grown a ton over the years and we have a lot of people in that um, who really love getting their bundles every single month all right, so let's take a peek at the fabric. All right, so this month we are working with a new collection called Warehouse District, uh, designed by Wishwell for Robert Kaufman. It is digitally printed, and whenever we get digital prints like this, people just get really excited about it. This is one of those collections that really pushes the boundaries of what is possible with digital printing, because you're not restricted by the same um, components that you are when you use screen printing and the traditional method. In. You can really get a lot of these really cool textures and different color combinations that wouldn't be possible if you had to do a traditional repeat in the screens. Um, of course, there's also some great supporting prints in addition to the ones that really stand out there. But the collection was inspired by uh, traveling to different downtown areas and you see a lot of the buildings that have been there for generations that just have different textures on them you know they've been painted over the years and things are chipping away and you just see, sometimes see graffiti and it was really inspired by that so it really has a very urban feel but I also feel especially with ones like this that it reminds me of the different sedimentary layers and I'm in the Midwest so when you drive through uh, highways that have been literally cut into the land uh when you go through a hill you see stuff like this and it just really reminded me of that and so that's why we called it this pattern strata because we're going to make use of this really different uh, look to kind of create kind of that landscape look but also uh, tie into that urban environment all right, so now we're gonna get into sewing and I, this is so simple. You guys are gonna love this. It is just a few steps. You're gonna be able to whip this one up really quick. If you just wanna get the pattern or if you just wanna get the kit, um, it's called Strata. You can search for that on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com and we will have kits while supplies last. The patterns will be up um, until they maybe make it into a book someday and then they'll be in the book. So check that out over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. So one of the other fabrics that I didn't show you because it's not a part of the bundle, we reserved it just for the background when we were doing kits and finishing kits for our members is this really pretty uh, sort of not quite ivory there are some parts that are more taupe um, but it is really pretty and it makes a great fabulous background against all of these wild and urban prints um, so what we're going to do is all the measurements for this are in the pattern to go along with it but what you're going to do is you're just going to take the fold of that fabric and you are just going to cut across it you could do this with a rotary cutter too i think i just 
pop them off with my little handy microchip scissors. I love those. Um, so we're going to do that for five of these. We're going to do some strip piece units and that will make everything go super fast because rather than cutting a bunch of tiny squares and tiny um, rectangles we're going to sew one big strip set together and then cut that apart it just makes everything go super super fast so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to flip these right sides together with the strips that i cut for my fat quarters and i'm just going to sew down the side and i don't pin or anything i just line it up as i'm going on the sewing machine it just makes this process go super super fast and so you can get to the sewing part the one thing that i would recommend that you do though is that you line up the edges here here and that way they're going to be right on top of each other so you're going to be able to get the maximum amount of length in here because you don't want to use a salvage when you're sewing and so you want to be able to get as much of this as you can and that works best if you work on lining up those salvage edges um, you do need a full 21 inches of length from the end of where the salvage starts where the printed part of the fabric is until where it's cut um, that's listed out in the pattern and it's okay if you have more than 21 inches in fact it's better if you do um, most fabrics you're going to be able to get that just fine unless you have one that has a really fat salvage um, and there are some of those designs out there um, but this one you're going to be just fine but again very important because then you can get as many as you need to out of this otherwise you're going to be scrambling trying to find more fat quarters when you're all done because you won't be able to cut all that you need out of it. All right, so I've got my sewing machine set up to sew a quarter inch stitch, nothing fancy here. And all I do is I kind of lift this up and I will line up my edges. And then I just put a finger on top and just kind of hold that in place. And I'm not tugging or pushing or anything with the fabric. I'm just kind of holding it in place with my finger and letting it come up as the feed dogs take the fabric. Now to make this process even faster, I'm gonna chain piece everything. So I'll make sure that I've got my right side up. Then I can flip these guys right sides together and line up those selvages at the top. Then I just lift my presser foot up, give it just a tiny little bit of space there and start sewing. All right, so I'm gonna do this for all the five that I need for this strip set unit. All right, so now it's time to press these open and I really love to press my seams open, especially on a block like this because it gets super flat. And then also a lot of times if you are pressing over like this, the uh, strip can tend to kind of creep up on you like that. And that is not good for strip piecing because we want nice straight seams so that way we can have consistent blocks as we cut those apart to create our row sets. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pressing these guys open. So to get started, you're gonna lay everything so that the wrong side is facing up and then you wanna open up that seam with your fingers. And I like to do a little bit of finger pressing, nothing too crazy, just you know, three or four fingers down on that seam ahead of it. And then I put the nose of the iron right down the center of that seam. And as long as I keep my fingers ahead and I'm pressing that open, then everything goes fairly smoothly as I press along this. Once I've finished on the back side, I go ahead and flip everything over, and then I'm going to press from the front side one more time just to get it nice and super flat. All right, I'm gonna repeat that with my other strips. One thing that I really tried to do when I was laying out my quilt was making sure that I had a good range of values when I was putting my five strips together. I wanted to go kind of from light to dark and that I had a good color transition in all of them. That way they all would be different, but they all would have some kind of a harmony to them. So in this one, we've got some dark blue and green fading into some, some lighter dark blue and green, but it starts to have a little bit yellow. So then we have the very bright yellow strip in that and then yellow is right next to orange on the color wheel so it makes sense to go into the orange here and then we also have a little bit of pink starting to come out so it transitions well into the one that has the pink and the orange and so to me this is a very good color story and I'm excited to see uh, it all together so at this point we're gonna start joining them into sets of two um, so I'm just gonna flip these guys right sides together again and put them through the sewing machine still using that standard quarter inch Stitch and making sure that my salvages are nice and lined up across the bottom so that way we can get as many strip sets as we need to when we cut these apart. All right, lining up those salvages and then just some more sewing. 
get that started. I always get it started first. I, I know some people pin this, I, I never do. So what I do is I just get it started and then I just line up those edges. I'll just lift them up and get them lined up and then just kind of hold that with my finger and let it take it up. And that will save you so much time and you won't need to pin anything. All right, flip these guys right sides together and do the same. Now you have a choice here. You could press these open now with your seams or you could finish sewing your entire strip set together and then press it all at once. When I was putting the whole quilt together, I did sets of two at one time and then I matched sets of two to other sets of two to get a good color balance that ever, nothing would be the exact same. Um, but uh, you can do whatever you want. For this video, I'm gonna do it all at once and then press at one time because I'm just doing one at a time. So basically, if you're wanting to be super efficient, it might be uh, good to press them now and then just mix them up and uh, as you're pairing your sets of two together make sure you keep enough to the side for that fifth one um, or if you're doing them all at once and you want to really make sure that you love every single combination then it might be faster to just wait and press once you have them all together all right so I'm going to first go ahead and sew these guys together and then I'm going to join the uh, 2z well it will be a 3z to the 2z but first i'm going to go ahead and join that fifth strip to the side all right one more seam to join then we are almost done with this strip set So I'm gonna go ahead and press this as well. The difference of pressing when you just have one and pressing when you have a lot going on here is you wanna lift and press that iron as opposed to just sliding it down because you could accidentally flip some of these seams going in the wrong direction. One other thing you wanna really watch out for is to make sure that you have nice straight seams. So you should see it looking absolutely straight. If you see like a little wiggle in there, it means there's a pleat on the other side and you need to fix that or your piece is not gonna turn out the right size in the end. All right, I'm gonna make my way across, go ahead and pressing all of these open, and then we'll press on the right side as well. All right, so now it's time to give this a trim. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay it out on your cutting mat and you're gonna get your long ruler. And what you wanna do for this first cut is you wanna pick out which has the widest selvage. So this part here is where I need my measurement to be beyond, so that way we don't accidentally uh, end up with selvage in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that lined up. I typically get it as close to it as I possibly can uh, without being in it. And then you also want to make sure that you've got inch lines of your ruler hitting where those seams are. And as long as it's nice and even with those seams going all the way up, then you know you're going to have a square strip set when you go to sun, uh, lay it next to everything else when you are putting your quilt together. So those are the two very important things to pay attention to. Once you're happy with all that, you can go ahead and give it a cut. Now for this first one only, we're gonna wanna be, flip that around and we're gonna wanna trim off these edges. So we kinda overcut a little bit and for this one, we are going to now get it cut to the size it needs to be. Now for all the rest of these, you would just line your ruler up and again, you wanna keep making sure that as you get it lined up, that you're also paying attention to where all of these inch lines are. If you get off, then you need to square yourself up again, but do it with wasting the least amount of fabric possible because you do wanna get your correct amount of strip sets from this large strip piece unit. But isn't that so much easier and faster uh, to sew all these strip sets together and then cut them apart than it would be to cut all these 
tiny squares and all these tiny rectangles and then sew them all together. That would just take forever and ever. So this way we can have a really cool combination. It looks really neat. It's fun. Um, it uh, looks it look like that strata, like that earth turning over. And it is really neat and really fast. Okay, so now we're going to get ready to sew the additional unit. This one kind of shows off in little bits and pieces. The other one is one long piece of fabric so we can kind of see those really cool color changes uh, in and see that fabric in all its glory. So this is a great one where you really have prints that are kind of like too pretty to cut up that you want to be able to see the whole thing. This is a really good quilt for that. So this fabric here is the exact same as this one here but again you get to see it in all its glory here which is why I did those alternating prints so we could get little bites of the fabric and then also really see it in its full uh, length of fabric especially with these digital prints it's so pretty. All right so one thing you want to pay attention to when you are doing this at home is we give you the length that this is supposed to be cut to but what you should do is sometimes our individual quarter inch seams varies just a little bit. Sometimes we cut a little off, sometimes we sew a little off, sometimes we press a little off, but whatever it is, sometimes this is not the, the correct measurement that it should be. Either it's a little smaller, or a little shorter. But as long as it's the same consistent measurement, there's one thing you can do to make sure that your quilt turns out perfectly. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure the distance from the top to this seam right here and you're going to add one quarter inch and that will give you the correct sizing that you need in order to be able to get this to be the correct size and have this block be the same size as this row unit here and then everything will turn out great your quilt will be nice and flat and you won't be stretching and wondering why these things aren't fitting together properly when you're sewing this together so always aim for what it should be if it's mathematically correct however if if you're not, no big deal. Just take that measurement from here to here, add quarter inch, you'll be good to go. All I do is I line up my corners. I don't pin or anything like that. And I am just doing one for the video today, but you can always chain piece these. All right, so we're gonna press this seam open as well. I've got that seam to open up already, and we can just put the nose of the iron straight down the center. Flip it over, press from this side as well. And there we have it. We have two rows that are the exact same width, which is perfect. It's what we were going for. And they show off those fabrics really beautifully. And at this point, it's super easy. You're going to alternate the way these go, um, depending on what row it is. And this is all laid out in your layout diagram. So you're gonna have the piece on one and then a uh, solid one. And it's just gonna alternate back and forth. You'll get those rows sewn together vertically. You'll add some sashing in between and a border on top and you are done. And it is really cool. This neutral background is really awesome at making those fabrics really pop and letting them shine in all their glory. And like I said, it's super fast, super easy. This one was so quick to put together. I got it together um, within about a week. I, I do all of mine in about a week, but this one took less time at the sewing machine. So that's always a very good thing when we have busy lives and we have a lot to do. I know I'm a mom in a pandemic with a kid that's going to school at home on a computer and I have an eight month old, almost nine month old. So it's, it's a little chaotic in my life right now and I was still able to get this together in about a week. So that is really awesome and you guys can do it quickly at home as well. I hope you have enjoyed this month's tutorial. Again, the pattern is called Strata and you can get it at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. We will have kits um, wall supplies last. These are always limited edition fabric lines. We are going to be able to get a little bit more of this fabric if we can because it has been super popular for Robert Kaufman and we can see why. It's just beautiful. Um, but you know they're they're not available forever and ever but it is really pretty if you've got a really modern print you've got prints you want to show off the fabric for and you don't want to cut them up you want to show them in all your glory like for this one this is a great opportunity for that for that fat quarter bundle and then I also whenever we have digital prints in the shop they always go really quick 
but then people are like, okay, but what do I do with that? What pattern? And this is a great pattern for it. It's got that really modern look and really shows off what makes those prints absolutely stunning. All right, so check out Stash with Stephanie. If you're not a member, you get lots of great deals. You get over $200 worth of free patterns. We'll send you a coupon to download all those once you join. And it's really fun and you get patterns like this for free every single month. Plus you also get a discount on my new book, Fat Quarter Workshop, and that includes 12 Fat Quarter friendly patterns in it. And a lot of those have been our greatest hits from Stash with Stephanie, plus two exclusive ones that you can only get in the book. All right, well, thanks so much for following along and until next time, happy quilting.